Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today of using the production shaders or the MIP shaders within Maya for your compositing purposes. So here for example I have an image that I took with uh, my digital camera. It's a regular digital camera, nothing fancy about it. And I'm just compositing three CG elements in it. As you can see it's taken in the environment colors and adding it correctly and also having the reflection nicely. You can also take it a little bit further and rather than having it comped within your image we can also do it that it will come out separate along with the proper alpha so you can composite that in your compositing package later on so let's get started I'm gonna start by creating file new and we're starting from scratch the first thing I'm gonna do is to add an image plane to my camera and I already took a couple of pictures so I'm just gonna use uh, one of them now and now it's just a matter of adjusting the perspective to match that image plane. So I'm just using the grid as my guidance. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I was using my uh, home digital camera to capture these images. It's not a fancy camera at all, it's just a regular uh, digital camera. And uh, matter of fact, I was using the Sony CyberShot here to capture the background. In order for me to capture the environment, I used uh, just a mirror ball to capture that environment illumination you don't have to buy any fancy devices to capture it like in the HDR images you can do what I did and I used the Chinese relaxation balls here and they come in many shapes you might see them looking uh, something like this and one of the colors that they come in is the chrome which is highly reflective and pretty much that's what I've done so let me show you a couple of the images that I've took so here is the background and the environment ball for it another background and the same thing with the environment ball. As you can see, actually, you can see me here taking the picture. And when you're doing that, you want to make sure when you cut the image, it's, you cut it right at the edges here. You don't want to capture illumination from the other uh, parts of the room or the uh, area that you're capturing in. Okay, so let's get back to Maya. And I'm just going to create a plane that we're going to be using as the shadow capture or the, where the object is going to sit on. And I'm just going to add simple objects just to for the render speed. So what I've simply done here is I added multiple materials, um, all of them actually main materials, and from the attribute editor of the pre materials I have presets, so I choose here for example something matte, and here I choose chrome, and here is glass, and since this is glass I placed another coil inside here so you can see some reflections or refractions. And for this plane I'm just going to give it a regular Lambert, and doesn't matter to be honest with you because we're going to override it with another MIP shader but I'm just going to lower the transparency so I can see the uh, background and from the looks of things I need to move them down a little bit since this is my image plane I can go to the attribute and say fit the resolution gate so we're pretty much ready to go so the first thing I'm going to do now I'm just going to go to my camera and under the mentor ray section I'm going to add the lens shader which is the MIA exposure simple and by default we have a gamma of 2.2 so if I render this as is we start seeing things out of the bat that obviously the gamma is adding to the background image this is something we need to remove and we start seeing obviously this is not working properly so we're gonna st start adjusting all that stuff right now I'm not gonna be using the image plane anymore I'm going to rely on the ray switch environment for that. So I'm just going to go to my image plane, reduce the alpha gain to value of zero. That means it's not going to show up in the render. So if I just do a partial render here, you see it's not coming anymore. We need to obviously to bring that image back to the background camera. So we're going to go back to my perspective. And in the environment itself, I'm going to use the MIP ray switch environment. So it's going to be under the environment section. Here it is. And you'll see simply it has two parameters. So it's a very simple shader. You have a background and an environment. So the background will be the image that we used for the background. And the environment will be the mirror ball, the one that we used to capture the lighting information. So to capture that in background and as an image, we're going to use another MIP node, which is called MIP Camera Map. So and here it is and it's simply going to ask you what you want to map to it it's going to be a texture file I'm just going to locate my file which is the background and pretty much this is done 
now I'm gonna go back to my ray switch environment and I need to add the environment which is the mirror ball so it's another node called an MIP mirror ball pretty much is gonna ask you which texture file that you wanna add and for this we're just gonna locate the mirror ball that we just took picture of so let's render this and see how it will look like right, we start seeing a little bit of improvement because we have the uh, reflect the object here capturing the environment but we still didn't adjust these washed out colors so for this I need to go back to my nodes so I'm just gonna go with my focus here to go with mirror ball one and you will see it has a section for the D gamma since we're gonna be using 2.2 for the one that we had in the MIA exposure simple and I'm gonna go back to my camera map and also we have another one for D gamma 2.2 so let's quickly render this and oh by the way while we're doing that since we're capturing indirect illumination I'm just gonna enable final gather I'm just gonna lower the value here for speed let's have a quick render and right off the bat you can start seeing things looking much much better now obviously we need more ray trace for the uh, glass so I'm just gonna adjust that now and let me increase this to 1 for the sampling and the ray tracing. I'm going to raise the shadow because I'm going to have shadow now. And that's going to be my next step is to capture shadow. So I'm going to put uh, a light just to capture the shadow here to simulate it uh, that it's falling on the uh, bench. And I know there is a light coming from this window here and another light coming from this door here which is a, a nice parallel light that's coming in this direction. So I'm just going to place a spotlight here to give me the fake shadow that's going to fall onto the bench. I'm going to go say look through selected something like this and increase the size and since we want shadows I'm going to enable the ray trace shadow and increase the shadow rays to be 12 for now and this soft shadow so we're going to increase the light radius and let's see how that will look like okay so we start to get something but not really what we want we want it obviously to uh, be softer than that and uh, we want to get rid of that plane here but for now you can see the reflection is coming out nicely the matte object is being illuminated you can still see it fits same thing with the uh, sphere that is uh, glass so let's see what we can do about that plane in here I'm just gonna go to the uh, material of that plane and what I want is the actual SG node and under the mental ray section we're gonna override that shader I'm gonna put a material shader not in the shadow it's gonna be a material shader which is gonna be the MIP matte shadow here it is and by default the background is set to black so let's see how that will look like if we render it and here you go it just came out black so we need to tell it that to use this image as the background color so if I'm gonna open my hypershade this is the ray switch and you will see we connected to the background the MIP camera map this one has the texture file that is the background image so we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go to the, the matte shadow and I'm gonna put the same node that has the MIP camera map just middle mouse connected to the background color so let's minimize that and render again and you'll see it came out nicely so now it's a matter of adjusting the plane that I make sure it uh, goes a little bit further and also the shadow need to be worked on because it's too harsh here for the slight adjustment I'm gonna bring my uh, image plane back the render here yeah, obviously now we start seeing a conflict between the background because I have it uh, uh, enabled for the image plane but it's not really what I'm looking for I just wanna see the shadows and how far they extend that looks about right let me adjust the light a little bit I'm gonna increase the shadow radius maybe to six and increase the ray shadow rays and since this we have a glass here I'm gonna increase the ray depth as well so let's render that so now the shadows are acting much nicer maybe it's a little bit strong so I'm just gonna reduce it a little bit in here now I'm gonna get rid of this image plane by reducing the alpha gain back to zero. 
just going to render this portion. 